A Hiker's Guide to Plants of the Desert Southwest, including cactus, wildflowers, native trees, interesting bushes, and the agave family. You'll learn where to find them, how to identify them, when flowers and fruit are available, and which ones are edible. Good morning. I'm in the uh, Gila Canyon section of the Arizona National Scenic Trail. And today we're talking a little bit about uh, trees of the Sonoran Desert. I'm camped here last night in a mesquite bosque. A bosque is just a fancy uh, Spanish word for a grove, typically used with mesquite trees. Because mesquite trees tend to grow in uh, areas like this, uh, in river valleys, where they get extra water. They have uh, a distinctive ability to send roots down into the earth, hundreds of feet deep, and uh, draw moisture where there's uh, moisture in the ground uh, that allows them to grow. So uh, this is a mesquite tree that I'm standing right next to here. And uh, you probably know them uh, from having uh, steaks grilled with mesquite wood. They make uh, excellent firewood. Uh, burns very hot for a very long time and imparts a very nice flavor to meats. Uh, mesquite trees were very important to Native Americans um, because they were, they were a primary food source. The uh, seed pods, and there's no seed pods on the tree right now, we're in uh, January, they're long gone, but uh, the seed pods themselves, not the seeds, but the pods are uh, a very good source of calories. They're uh, naturally sweet, and in many areas around Tucson, many stores around Tucson, you can actually buy cookies, brownies, etc., made with mesquite meal. Starting about mid-April in the Tucson area, mesquite trees begin to develop flower buds that quickly blossom. There are hundreds of tiny flowers on these cylindrical clusters called catkins. If you walk beneath a mesquite tree during this period, don't be alarmed at the thousands of bees you will hear busily pollinating the flowers. The trees can get literally covered with flowers during the bloom period, though they are not very pretty. Mesquite, Palo Verde, and Ironwood bloom right around the same time. Do be aware that the pollen from these trees will be pervasive, so if you have pollen allergies, this is not a good time to be out and about in Arizona. So uh, young mesquite pods, before the beans get a chance to form, are, uh, are readily edible. Once the beans form, the beans are inedible and you just kind of have to chew off uh, what you can. A little on the chewy side, I wouldn't call them sweet yet. They develop their sweetness later on once they mature, but they're still edible at this stage. I think it would be better if they were cooked up. Around the end of June, the pods will ripen and the seeds will harden. If you're interested in harvesting the pods, you should do so quickly before the monsoon rains come in a week or two. There are three common varieties of mesquite in the Sonoran Desert. This variety with purple streaks in the pods is called velvet mesquite. If the pods are straight and golden yellow, it's a honey mesquite. And the screw bean mesquite needs no explanation. Sap oozes naturally from mesquite trees, and Native Americans used to use this as a form of chewing gum. Let's taste uh, some of this uh, sugary looking mesquite sap. Crunchy, a little sweet, kind of chewy, sticks to the teeth, but uh, not bad. Not not delicious, not like a swirl fruit or anything, but edible. Uh, another tree here uh, in this little grove is a Palo Verde tree. And Palo Verde is uh, Spanish for green stick, and uh, you can see why it's called that. Uh, the bark actually has chlorophyll in it, so uh, even when there's no leaves on the tree during the winter like this, it can still photosynthesize uh, calories. Uh, the Palo Verde tree has, uh, unlike the mesquite tree, even though they grow in very similar areas, has uh, 
wood that is not nearly as desirable. It's almost like balsam wood, very, very soft, very easy to, to cut with a, with a saw. Uh, and really does not burn very well uh, at all. So uh, not a real good source for firewood or building material. Uh, this particular Palo Verde tree uh, still does have a few pods left on it. And uh, these pods, both of these trees are in the legume family, the pea family. They're actually just great big uh, pea bushes and or bean bushes. And uh, the Palo Verde uh, seeds were also a very important source of uh, calories for Native Americans. Similar to mesquite, Palo Verde buds will start to show in mid-April. Palo Verde don't form catkins like the mesquite. Instead, the buds look like capers. About a week later, the trees will burst into bloom, and I do mean burst. The trees are covered with these pretty little yellow flowers. And if you drive through the Catalina foothills in northern Tucson this time of year, it can be quite a sight. The quantity of flowers will depend on the species. Those bred for ornamental use are incredibly prolific, whereas the specimens you'll see hiking through the wild desert will be a lot more sparse. All right, we're stopping by this uh, Palo Verde plant to munch down here. This one's kind of unusual in that it has flowers and pods on it at the same time. So I can go in here, pick off a couple pods. So I've got some, um, some Palo Verde pods here this morning. This one is nice and, and uh, young and supposedly tender. And uh, no cooking or anything, just raw. It's got just a little bit of sweetness. It's not quite as sweet as mesquite is, but really pretty darn good. Especially when they're, you gotta get them when they're young like this. Like with everything, it's the younger sprouts before the pods have had a chance to fully um, grow and harden. Um, that's when you really have to eat them. Uh, in this case, uh, not the pods, but the seeds themselves are uh, highly edible. They have to be, uh, uh, cooked, boiled, steamed, pounded, etc., uh, and processed in order to uh, to eat. Uh, this time of year, they're like little rocks, but uh, very another very important food source: the uh, the Palo Verde tree. Towards the end of the Palo Verde bloom season, a strange sight unfolds on sidewalks around Tucson. Stripes of Palo Verde blossoms lead to ant nests. These are leafcutter ants who live symbiotically with a fungus that grows on the petals. I had never heard of ironwood trees before I moved to Tucson, but after living here a few years, I now look forward every spring to the spectacular blooms. You'll see ornamental plantings of the tree along roadsides and boulevards, but this slow-growing species is jaw-dropping when you see the ancient specimens growing wild in the desert wash areas. So when people think of really old things here in the Sonoran Desert, they think about swaros because they live to be 150, 200 quite often. But far exceeding that are the ironwood tree. And there's an example right behind me amidst that uh, grove of swaro cactus right there. Uh, that guy's got to be ancient. Um, I've heard they can live as long as 800 years and I've heard numbers uh, up to 1,600 years that they can they can live. And uh, that correlates well with the fact that their wood is so hard, which is typical. When wood is slow growing, it's often much harder. Uh, Iron wood is so hard that if you put it in the water, it'll actually sink. But uh, eventually the, uh, the mistletoe seems to take it out when they get really infested. Uh, but the one behind me right here today looks uh, pretty happy here in the Maven Behan Sanctuary. This is a, a great place to see trees. Uh, there's tons of, of very healthy ironwood here, Palo Verde and mesquite and acacia bushes. So if you're here in uh, early to middle of May, uh, you can get uh, quite a view of all these different kinds of trees and shrubs that grow here in the sanctuary. Uh, and it's very easy walking. It's very flat. Uh, I wouldn't even call it hiking. It's so flat. Um, but it's a beautiful spot to see the wildlife and the, 
the trees and the cacti and the birds. The purple martins are flitting around here this morning, feeding their young that they uh, in their nests in the saguaro cacti. So a uh, great spot to see wildlife. One of the things that impresses me about the Mabine Behan uh, Sanctuary out here is uh, how many young ironwood trees there are. Uh, considering how old these guys can be, uh, it's amazing how many small young saplings uh, you see out here at the sanctuary. You don't really notice them until they're in bloom and then they really stand out with those pink flowers. But uh, pretty cool sight. Of the three trees in the pea and bean family, the ironwood flower looks the most like a pea flower. If you look closely at them, the variation in the lavender and magenta colors is really delightful. When they're in bloom, you can often hear an ironwood tree before you see it. The buzz of millions of bees busying themselves in the flowers is audible from a hundred or more feet away. Don't be alarmed by the bees, they are way too interested in the flowers to pay any attention to you. Mesquite, Palo Verde, and Ironwood all have thorns, but I think Ironwood are the most wicked because they are so darn sharp. In late June, the Ironwood tree pods will begin to ripen. The trees are covered with the ripe pods. They weren't used as much by Native Americans for food, even though the trees really bear very heavily. I'm guessing because they, the trees are just not as widespread as Palo Verde and Mesquite. All three of these species of Sonoran Desert trees are plagued by a parasitic plant, mistletoe. Yes, you heard me right, mistletoe of Christmas notoriety, and this is a close cousin. Here's the uh, mistletoe in the dead mesquite. These are uh, a great source, one of the sole sources of food for phenopepla uh, during the winter time. Mistletoe growing on Palo Verde trees was considered inedible by Native Americans, though I've researched it and haven't found out why that was the case. Mistletoe growing on ironwood was often harvested as soon as it turned transparent and eaten raw. Be careful not to consume any plant stems as they are highly toxic. With their long lifespans, it's not unusual to see many huge clumps of the parasite on very old trees. Today we are only covering the main trees of the Sonoran Desert Valleys. That doesn't mean that's all we have here. Just to mention a few, we have large oak savannas in the high desert areas. We have groves of aspen that fill in after the fires have burned out the ponderosa pines, of which Arizona has the largest forest of in the world. But these trees are all found in the mountains, and they will have to wait their turn on another day. We also have Arizona sycamores, and cottonwood trees that like to grow along riverbeds. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, please click like, subscribe below, or leave me a comment.